Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. Well, the election is upon us, but I recently posted my election prediction video, which as predicted, caused a little bit of controversy. I've lost about 30 subscribers so far and counting, which does suck, of course, but I did promise my viewers that I would make an election video this year, so as Donald Trump would say, promises made, promises kept. Anyways, thank fuck that's over with. Now it's time to get back to the main focus of this channel, which is defeating the slap head curse. And of course, as you chooms already know, the mainstay of treatment for the most common cause of hair loss, antrenic alopecia, is a 5 error blocking drug, either finasteride or tutasteride. Both of these drugs are extremely effective at crushing the ultimate nemesis of every hair loss sufferer on the planet, the trash hormone DHT. Like all drugs, there is a small risk of side effects, and I've actually made several videos on how to manage those side effects if you do get them, and I'll link those videos below. However, there's one side side effect that people ask about very often that I haven't really talked much about, other than answering questions frequently about it in the comment section. That side effect is watery semen. So in this video, let's go ahead and go balls deep into watery semen. Do finasteride and dutasteride actually cause watery semen? How common is it? What causes it? And is it a serious problem for hair loss witchers? Like does it affect fertility, for example? Well, first of all, I don't think there's much doubt that 5 air blockers can indeed cause watery semen. It is is definitely a real side effect, and it is one of the most frequently mentioned side effects in the comments section of my videos. It's also frequently brought up as a problem on Reddit. However, if you look at the Propecia package insert, Propecia being the brand name for finasteride, it doesn't say anything at all about watery semen. But it does say that a decrease in the amount of semen is one of the most common side effects. Also in the package insert, one of the items in the list of side effects that have been reported with finasteride is, quote, poor quality of semen. So maybe that's what they're referring to when it comes to watery semen. Anyways, if we look at the package insert for dutasteride, also known as Avodart, we also see that it mentions semen volume reduced as a potential side effect of the drug. So, where does this evidence that 5 air blockers cause decreased semen production come from? Well, it's not just anecdotes on Reddit and the Hair Cafe comment section. It comes from this study from 1999, which actually is one of the best studies ever done on the effect of finasteride on semen production. The reason I say that is because this study is a very well-designed, randomized, controlled study on the effects of finasteride on semen. There are actually several other studies on the effects of finasteride on sperm counts and fertility, and I went over them in my video on that subject that I'll link below. However, most of the data on the effects of finasteride on semen and sperm production is from very poor quality studies. These studies are mostly case reports like this one here. Typically, what happens in these case reports is that men on finasteride will go to an infertility clinic with low sperm counts, but when finasteride is stopped, their fertility fertility levels and sperm count go back to normal. However, this type of case report doesn't establish that finasteride actually caused the low sperm count. The sperm count may have had another cause and just gradually improved over time by itself. Even if finasteride did occasionally cause a significant reduction in sperm counts based on isolated case reports though, these case reports give us no idea how common or how rare a side effect like that would actually be. That's why randomized controlled studies are considered to be much higher quality scientific evidence than just case reports. Like I said though, I went over the effects of 5 air blockers on fertility in a separate video, so I'm going to concentrate here on the effects on semen volume and semen characteristics. The randomized study I already mentioned randomized 181 men aged 19 to 41 years old to receive a dose of 1 mg per day of finasteride or a placebo over a period of 48 weeks, followed then by a 60 week period off all of the drugs. The men gave semen samples for analysis during the study. As expected, DHT levels dropped about 65% on finasteride and testosterone levels increased by about 15%. After stopping finasteride, DHT levels and testosterone levels returned to normal. So the results of the study were actually pretty surprising because finasteride at 1 mg per day had essentially no effect on any semen parameters. The ejaculate volume did decrease by an average of 0.3 milliliters in the men on finasteride, but even in the men on placebo, there was a decrease of 0.2 milliliters. So this difference was not statistically significant. Now, these measurements were made after taking finasteride for a minimum of 24 weeks, so it's possible that some men had reduced semen volume early on, but then got better by 24 weeks. Also, it's worth noting that in this study, the investigators did prostate scans and found that the prostate size did decrease very slightly by just 0.7 cubic centimeters with finasteride. Even though the decrease was small, it was still considered statistically significant. This reduction in prostate size might have something to do with the slight decrease 
in semen volume since the prostate creates the seminal fluid that is in semen. In two other studies using a higher dose than normal in young men, specifically 5 mg per day, there was a significant reduction in ejaculate volume of about 0.5 milliliters compared to placebo. Again, this reduction in ejaculate volume appeared to be from the effects of finasteride inhibiting secretions from the prostate, which is an organ that has very high DHT levels. In addition to this, in the original Propecia studies involving over 1,800 subjects, decreased volume of ejaculate was seen in 0.8% of subjects on finasteride at 1 mg per day versus 0.4% of subjects on placebo. So again, not that frequent, but more than what was seen with the placebo treatment. So there's one other good randomized controlled trial looking at semen parameters, this one here from 2007. It's a slightly smaller study that enrolled 99 healthy men, but it has one advantage over the other study because it looked not just at finasteride, but also at dutasteride, which of course is very important information for members of the dutasteride master race. The finasteride study group got a 5 mg per day of finasteride, which is higher than the normal 1 mg dose that is used for hair loss. The dutasteride group got the standard dose of 0.5 mg of dutasteride per day. Like the other study, blood DHT and testosterone levels were measured. DHT was markedly suppressed and testosterone was increased by 5 air blockers just as you would expect. Looking specifically at semen volume, both finasteride and dutasteride decreased semen volume. Finasteride decreased semen volume by 21% after 26 weeks, while dutasteride decreased it by 24%. After 52 weeks, the decrease in semen volume with finasteride was only 14%, which was less than the decrease seen at 26 weeks, and it was not statistically significant from the baseline semen volume. With dutasteride, though, the decrease was even more at 52 weeks than it was at 26 weeks. It was a 29% decrease. This probably reflects the fact that dutasteride takes longer to have its full effect due to its long half-life of 5 weeks. After stopping these drugs, the ejaculate volume with finasteride finasteride pretty much returned to normal, while with dutasteride, there was still a 16% decrease 26 weeks after stopping it. Again, that's probably because of the long half-life of dutasteride, 5 weeks versus 5 hours like with finasteride. Unlike the first study, the study also showed mild decreases in sperm count and sperm motility with 5 air blockers that were reversible when stopping the treatment. However, about 5% of the time, more marked decreases in sperm count were seen, though these men also had recovery when they stopped the treatment. So. This study showed more effect on sperm counts and motility than the first study, but remember that the first study just used the normal dose of finasteride at 1 mg per day versus this study that used 5 mg per day. In any case, mild reductions in sperm count and sperm motility aren't enough to cause infertility, unless of course somebody already has a borderline sperm count or sperm motility issue before starting finasteride or dutasteride to begin with. However, if a man is having fertility problems while they're on finasteride or dutasteride, the research strongly suggests that it is worth stopping the drug temporarily in order to see if the sperm count improves. At most, you'd only need to stop the drug for a couple of months, and even if you lost some hair in that period of time, it isn't anything that you can't get back once you resume treatment. So it's really no big deal, and I have covered this data on fertility in my video on finasteride infertility, which is linked in the description box. So what does this research lead us to conclude about watery semen while on finasteride or dutasteride? Well, I'm not sure low semen volume is the same thing as watery semen. I mean, they probably are two completely different things, but none of the studies I've seen actually look at the consistency of the semen since that's pretty subjective and it is pretty hard to quantify in something like a research study. Nevertheless, it looks like 5 air blockers may have some mild effect on the prostate, even in healthy men with normal prostates, and those effects can affect semen volume and consistency. These effects seem to be more mild with finasteride at 1 mg per day versus finasteride at 5 mg per day or with utasteride. It also looks like the effect on semen volume volume improves over time, at least for finasteride. With dutasteride, the effect may be more long-lasting due to that drug's much longer half-life, but it also will go away once the drug is out of the body completely. Finally, what's most important here is that it doesn't look like the ejaculate volume or consistency has any adverse effects on fertility. It is completely irrelevant. The research suggests that 5 air blockers could cause some slight changes in sperm counts and sperm motility, but most of the time, the sperm counts and sperm function are still well within the limits of what is considered normal. So very rarely these drugs can affect fertility, but the data shows that the effects wear off when you stop them, and any effect they have on fertility will be very mild. Finasteride isn't male birth control after all, and there have been plenty of healthy children who have been made by fathers using finasteride. So if you notice watery semen or low semen volume when starting a 5-air inhibitor, don't worry about it. Just recognize
recognize that it is not a serious side effect and it almost never will affect fertility at all. If there were any effect on fertility, it is clear that the effects wear off if the drugs are stopped temporarily. Also, like most 5 error blocking side effects, it does appear that the effects on semen volume and consistency wear off with continued use of the drugs, so it might be best just to push through it if that does happen to you. Overall, I consider this a very minor problem, and it's definitely not worth going bald just for the sake of having your semen have the consistency of soft serve ice cream. So please, don't worry about it, chumps, because it really doesn't matter. All right. I am definitely glad to be back talking about hair loss topics with you chums, and rest assured I am not going to let this tumultuous time for my nation interfere with my job as a hair loss witcher. So see you all next time, thank you for watching, God bless.